Well, seeing as you asked so nicely, and indeed offered double the tithe, you did say double, right? <laughs> Greetings and welcome to the Banner Saga. Oh yes, that's right. We have returned at long, long last. It is the one year anniversary of the channel, and what better game to play than the game that started it all. The first game that I played on the channel. The game that in some respects gave birth to the channel. And that, of course, is the Banner Saga. So let's play. The story in the Banner Saga changes based on your choices. You will occasionally switch between lead characters, witnessing the story unfold from different perspectives. The gods are dead. In their wake, man and giant survived through a tenuous alliance, driving black destroyers called Dredge deep into the northern wastes. Now is an era of growth and trade. Life goes on. Only one thing has stopped. The sun. Yes, indeed. Is it the end times for these Vikings and giants? An epic story. A tale of snow and ice. Of strife and war. It has been several long months on the road. The first signs of snowfall accost us on our approach to Strand, largest of the trade cities on the Val human borders, and our last collection before returning to the capital. Tax collection, he means. We are tax collectors. Several days ago, the sun simply came to a stop in the sky. Though during these long winter days, none of us can be certain how long it has been this way. Some of the men in the caravan have taken it as a dire omen. I am not quick to superstition, but I myself will be glad to be done with this year's rounds. I've got a bad feeling about this. We have been warned by stranded travelers about brigands on the path through Richhorn, our road home. Our captain seems unconcerned. Perhaps he is as eager as I to be done here. We will rest here this day and inquire further when we speak to the governor. The beacons are lit! The beacons of Strand! The tax collectors have arrived. But what else is going on here? Behold the giants coming to take your money. Because... Hello? Whatever he said, I'm not happy about it. Trouble in the Great Hall. Don't worry. We've arrived. Now, boys, take him on. I'm just going to lean against this pole back here while you deal with them. See, what did I tell you? Trouble in the Great Hall. But fortunately, I, Ubin, the tax collector, I'm just going to lean up against this big post whilst I direct my warriors in a turn-based strategic battle for victory. The battle is fought in a series of turns that alternate between friendly and enemy forces. Each unit has a regular attack and a special attack, and two stats, strength and armor. Strength doubles up as hit points, and also the amount of damage dealt over and above the armor of your opponent. You can also opt to break armor instead, which is a separate amount of damage dealt to the armor directly, and improves your ability to kill them later on. Like a rabbit wolf, that one. A dead rabbit wolf now. Did it come to this? We fool ourselves believing that peace will last. My grandfather built all this from a poor fishing village. I'll know. stop whining. He watched the gods die. Watched the chaos that followed. Watched man and var slaughter each other. Even before the dreads arose. All we've done is traded one struggle for another. Now that there are no more threats to war against, we war against ourselves. This chieftain meant to kill me, and he's not the first. A dozen families in the city would gladly take my chair. 
This one had men waylaying merchants, both north and south of the city, strangling trade quite well, I would add, though he denied it to his lust. This sort of wool doesn't stop biting because the head is cut off. It just grows a new head. It's very sad, but these are human troubles, surely. I'm in a bad way, my friend. Help me finish this fight and I'll gladly send you on your way with double our king's tithe. Double? Take any men you need. They're loyal. I promise you that. They will meet you down in the proving grounds. Well, seeing as you are so nicely, and indeed offered double the tithe. You did say double, right? Chapter 1. Only the sun has stopped. You're approached by a familiar man who walks in step with you as you're leaving the Great Hall. He cuts to the chase. Eric, steward of Strand, I manage the governor's business. Ubin, isn't it? I'm just here for the tithe. I'm sure you'll get it, if not more. The governor tells me you'll be giving us a hand. Um, well, he did offer double the tithe, so... Yeah, it seems a bit chaotic around here, Eric. It's been worse. We've got a lot of irons in the fire. Uh, what does he want, exactly? Scalfings that you didn't hack up in the Great Hall, scattered after you took out their chieftain. The governor just wants to make sure they stay down. Was hoping you'd join me at the marketplace by the docks. If there's anyone left to worry about, I know who can tell us. And so here we are, in the city of Strand, and at this point you can visit any locations which are highlighted. Right now we can only visit the market, which is fortunate because that's where we want to go. Click the market to visit the merchant. Come on then, Eric. Uh, let me handle this. You meander through rows of open-faced houses and eroded stalls. Coloured canvases flap on a briny current. One man in particular blanches as you approach. Had. I'm not in the mood today. For, for, for what? Talking to an idiot. The Scalfing's chieftain bled out an hour ago, Had. So when you tell me what rat anus the rest of them crawled back into, no one's going to try to kill you this time. Oh, I don't talk to... Why, they don't talk to me! I don't have the patience for this. Had sweats visibly, fumbling with some dirty trinkets on his table. Oh, wait, wait. Just buy one of these. If everybody thinks I'm getting worked over every week, how am I supposed to know much? Just a little food money, yeah? Um, well, I'm sorry, but I came here to be paid, not to pay other people. So if you're not intimidated by my enormous size and girth and exceptional beard, then frankly, there is a problem here. You motion to Gunolf your enormous bodyguard, who looms over the man like a snake over a mouse. Gods! Eric! Laying on a bit heavy, don't you think? Where are the scalfings? N nobleman! Up by the east wall! Well, that was months ago, last I know! Had skulks away with a wave Eric's hand, gathering things from his hovel, disappearing for a while until this blows over, you figure. Your bodyguard steps forward. Are we done here? Gunalf, are you wearing green back at the Great Hall? No. Just bought him while you were walking around. Why? You look like a frog. Better than an eggplant. Gunalf goes off to look at more stalls. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, Gunalf. I didn't mean to be so harsh towards you. Um, actually, he's an old friend of mine. We just like to jest with each other. Do, do you think that I look like an eggplant, Eric? Eric, that, that man of yours seems unreliable at best. A blind dog wouldn't trust Had, but he used to be a scalfing. If they're licking their wounds, they've probably gone to old haunts, not new ones. Nobleman is a mead hall. Best I can tell, the name's ironic. Listen, I know a guy who would love to put a few of those scowls in the ground. I'm going to find him. I'll meet you there. After this, I'm done here. It's not up to me, my friend. Just make sure the governor remembers his promise. 
double the usual tithe. D double. Do you hear? That's two times. I don't want to be fobbed off with, like, you know, any excuses. Or As long as we're clear. I'm not claiming that I'm sort of obsessed by gold here or anything. But it is very, very shiny. I'll remind him. The Mead Hall. So this is where we must go next. Again, we have no choices at the moment. There is only one location. There is only one path. Though it will open up more in the future. You arrive in front of what must be Nobleman. A few minutes later, Eric appears with a weather-beaten man introduced as Valgard. I'll point them out, Eric says over his shoulder. Ready? You're walking through the front door? They ran to a meat house, says Valgard. I'll be surprised if they can stand up straight right now. Okay, here we go! Valgard boots the front door open so hard it won't close again without repair. As you enter the hall, Eric is already at the head of the table, axe drawn. Wide-eyed, drunken scalflings scramble to find their own weapons, turning tables and meat steins in the process. To battle, then! Naturally, Ubin just hangs out at the back of the hall, watching proceedings, presumably shouting commands. Things get a little bit tricky when we're fighting in these sorts of situations. Um, what I want, I think, is to keep Gunolf, who uh, is an enormous damage dealer, but has very low armor, so he loses health very, very quickly. So we're going to try and keep him out of the battle and have him just kind of like sweep around and mop up. Hopefully we'll just be able to kind of like sweep around on them and take them all out in a big arc. Uh, of course, we're not actually going to take everybody out. We're going to deal some damage and uh, leave them relatively weak but still capable of attacking because that'll tie up their turn order. And that's one of the key strategies that you have to remember. In um, the world of the Banner Saga, it's slightly odd, but once you get used to it, it's pretty essential. I was hoping for more of a fight than this. Look at them. It's going to be butchery. Um, well, I'm glad you're... Sounding very confident there. Vanguard, Valgard, um, let's just move up a little bit here. We want them to come more or less to us. Gnolf lumbering in on the side there. I'm just going to go straight for some damage at the moment. Their armor isn't particularly high, so we can basically just pound their strength down without worrying too much about their armor. So this guy basically is weak enough now. We don't have to worry about him. As is this guy. Neither of them are going to be doing any serious damage to us anytime soon. Gunolf, of course, is slow and will take ages to get into the fight. But if we can get him into the right position, his Tempest attack will be awesome. Oh, they've, got some, they've got some skills, these Skelfings. Uh, but we can finish this guy. Look, we're going to finish him in one hit. Ten wounds. This is what Gunolf does. He's slow to get into the fight, but when he arrives... You know it. We'll just we'll just start killing people. Promoted. Oh. Um. Sorry, Eric. I was not paying attention there. Eric apparently uh, was able to actually took quite a lot of damage. It serves him right, to be fair, for being so cocky as we came in here. Um, I've always found this to be quite a tough fight. This first fight. I don't know why. It just kind of is. Let's go with a tempest attack. Uh, it might actually hit our own guy. That's the only problem here. All right, fine. I won't do it. We'll just kill this guy. Good off is is a bit mad now at these at these humans. Stupid humans getting in my way. So we'll kill him. Finish him. Finish him, Valgard. Kind of a slightly weak hit that she just did there to finish him. I'm not entirely impressed by that. Certainly, the giants are not impressed at all. Ah, there they are. Gods be damned. I've got to wash off this blood. And also, my arm is slightly hanging off a, a, a little bit. I might have been a little bit overconfident going in there. I, I'm sorry about that. Eric is looking out the hall's window into the bay. A fleet of longships approach with the sails of bold reds and blues. One banner I know well. Vognir. Next for the vile kingship, last we spoke. The other flag. 
Looks important. Yeah, important guests. I'll see what I deal with all day long when I'm not dying because I've had my guts spilled all over the ground. Ah, things make a little more sense. You hoped I'd have a stake in saying everything's fine here when the royal guests arrived. Not me. The governor. And now I have to make sure there are no rotting bodies or pools of entrail still in the great hall before they come by. Can I ask one more favour? Are you worried that you're going to be one of those pools of entrails? Is that basically what you're asking? You, are you asking for medical assistance? I mean, I'm a giant. I don't know if I have any medical training, but, I mean, maybe it's possible. No, Eric, I've done enough already! What is it? If you happened to stall our guests down on the docks, I, I wouldn't object. Maybe I will. It looks so long-suffering, doesn't it, Ubin? It's just... Oh. Fine, I'll do my best, but I'm not happy about it, you understand. Eric and Valgard hustle from the mead house. To his credit, Eric tosses the barkeep a spur of silver for the mess. You give an apologetic shrug. You're certainly not going to pay him anything. And go to greet the new arrivals down at the docks. I am ad-libbing a few extra bits into the lines. I hope nobody minds about that. Oh, look at this! Here they come! The ships are coming in from the sea! Bold reds and blues! Important folk, no doubt. Let's see what they want! Bognir! A familiar Val steps onto the docks. In your mind, you recall a much younger version tramping the halls of Grofheim, abundant in purpose. Gods, Ubin! You're looking ancient! Comes with being old. And if there's a Vognir, there must be a Harkon. Must there? Still bleeding tributes from the poor and the stupid old Yorks? At what age do you lose a sense of shame? Your end it demands it. I'll take that over lingering to death in Grofheim. Speaking of, I had no sense that you were so far from home. Just returning from Arborang, in fact. And glad of it! Hakon motions to the other ships in the bay, sails still fluttering. Golden Wolfhead emblazoned on red. The King of Men. Or someone on his behalf. King's Whelp! The King's Son, Ludin. Didn't you know, Scrivener? We visit his capital, he visit ours. It's how you make alliances these days. It's a miserable waste of time. Yes, Harkon has it. I'd almost forgotten. It's a good thing you're around, Harkon. Then you're going to Grofheim? I have the distinct feeling I've finished my business in Strand, and was heading there myself. We should caravan. You can join my banner. I'm older than you, even though you're clearly more important. So, it's still my banner, you understand? I'll still be the principal character, just so you know. I, don't, I wouldn't want to be unclear about that. We should. Give it a day. In better circumstances, I'd drink a week away, but... Let's just be done. Find me tomorrow at the gates. What he's trying to say is that the prince is a delight to behold. Where is Mogir, Harkon? Have him find a place to put up the warriors. I'm heading up to meet the governor. A host of giants depart in his wake. You recognize a few... Others are strangers to you. Guess I'm off to find Mogir. See you in the morning, Scrivener. I'll be along. Long-suffering as I am. The young prince of men ambles from his ship. He brushes off his tunic, scanning the beach with low eyelids. Ludin looks for all the world like the sort of boy who grew up pulling the legs from spiders. The long road back to Grofheim should be more interesting than most years, you think. Weariness suddenly settles in, and you chuckle to yourself about what an odd day it has been. One of the governor's men at the Great Hall could find you a place to sleep. On the other hand, if you're going to join Vogner's caravan tomorrow, it might not hurt to share a drink with Harkon, or introduce yourself to the prince they spoke so highly of. 
So now our options open up a little bit. We can talk to Harkon, or we can talk to the Prince. Let's go and talk to Harkon. He seemed like a, a stalwart fellow, a fine and cheery man. Giant. Scrivener! You find Harkon in a mead house, surrounded by other Val. Strand is no stranger to Val, but rarely sees this many. Harkon waves you over. Went straight for a flagon. Vogni is the one who agreed to pass up a drink. I wasn't invited to the governor's hall anyway. You already missed the massacre. Every year I make the rounds collecting taxes. Every year it's the human settlements that give me trouble. No surprise. What's this time? When I got here, the great hall was full of bodies. We added a few more. Ha! Humans! I guess if I only lived as long as a yok's fart, I might be desperate to make something of myself too. It's not too late to start trying, Harkon. Harkon lets slip a low chuckle. <laughs> Any Val could recount his deeds, known as he is for cutting a sway through dredge at Vogner's side in the Second War, and regularly since then. Down here I'm a glorified bodyguard. You might have a point. Just another reason to get to Grofheim. Soon enough, I imagine. Ubin. Oh, Ubin, you may imagine so, but I have a sneaking suspicion it may be a little bit longer than you would like. You drink until the mead house becomes overbearing, then step back into the cool air outside. Perhaps a little bit wobbly, a little bit like the grog has taken effect. Although, of course, as a giant, how much effect could it possibly have taken? Let's go and introduce ourselves to the young prince of men. It doesn't really sound like the sort of thing I, that Ubin would do, but it's an option, so we're going to do it. Uh, is this the right place? You find the prince at an inn. Guards blanket the building, including a sharp-eyed Val who must be working for Ludin. A woman in red eventually waves you over and stands nearby, arms crossed. Greetings, Prince Ludin. Yes? You're with Vogner. I don't remember you. Not exactly. I've known Vogner a long time. I'll be joining you on the road back to Grofheim with my guards. Ludin looks up for the first time. The woman does not react. Why? I work for the king, carrying ties to the capital. We crossed by chance. Oh, a tax collector. Fine company. What do you want? I have a habit of recording history. I thought we might talk about your visit. A vile historian! <laughs> Don't you know already? Your king and mine both have been practically trumpeting it throughout the cities. I've been on the road a while, I'm afraid. Ludin takes a deep sigh. Whether tired or ungracious, you aren't certain. Maybe both? A formality, mostly. Vogner came to our capital in Arborang, and now I go to the Vals capital in Grofheim to cement this grand alliance for the next age of man and Val. You sound unconvinced. There's no need for it. It's damn cold up here. You get the sense he's struggling not to complain outright. You take the opportunity to excuse yourself. What a lovely fellow. A fine figure of a man the next king is looking to be. But I think we have had enough now. Let us retire to the Great Hall and find somewhere to rest up the night. After all, Ubin is not as young as he once was. And that is where we're going to leave this first episode of our return to the Banner Saga. Will there be a second episode? Well, that is up to you, as always. If you've enjoyed this, if you want to see me return to the Banner Saga and do a full playthrough, then leave a like, leave a comment, let me know. If not, then no harm, no foul. But I did want to return to it on this special anniversary day, as it was my first video, and remains one of my favourite games. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I have been Weird Wizard, and I will see you later. Captain's making. Three decades ago, in the reign of Victoria, London was stolen.
by bats. Now it lies a mile below the surface. It was dreadfully inconvenient for everyone, but it opened a vast black ocean to you. Welcome to the Untazi. Choose a past. You now lodge in a room above the blind helmsman. 